Hello everyone, uh, today we have Will Thompson, famous Will Thompson with us, uh, Power BI Desktop team, all these interesting new great features of Power BI Desktop is Will and Amanda, we will talk with Amanda later on as well. Um, Will, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, so uh, I, I'm Will Thompson, one of the uh, program managers on Power BI Desktop. Um, I, I really look after the the modeling features. So anything to do with uh, to do with DAX, or to do with uh, tables and relationships in Power BI. Some of the analytic features, so things like grouping and binning. Um, uh, then there's some other areas that I don't like filtering and um, some of the things around navigating between pages. Uh, it's a bit of a gray area then as to whether it's me or Amanda. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the area that I, I, I cover. Um, Correct, L been... like like that drill through uh, filter yeah, from one page through. to another page. I think that was one, was one of my features too. Right. Um, yeah, I've also been covering for the last couple of months, I've been covering for Kim Manis, our boss, um, who was the group, or is the group program manager for, for desktop um, for across the whole product. Um, but she's been out on maternity leave. She's had baby twins, uh, yes. twin boys. Uh, I know, Rosie, you know about that. I know everybody else does. The, the Power BI curse about having twins. Uh, <laughs> Is it? There are a lot of twins in the Power BI team. It's weird. Either people with twins or twins actually in the team. So I've got twins. Kim's just had twins. One of our designers, uh, his wife, just found out that they're pregnant with twins. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I, I knew about Kim, awesome. but didn't know about all others. So you yeah. got you got twins yeah. as, as well. Yeah, I've oh, got that's, two that, three year olds. That's uh, interesting. So if if somebody if somebody goes around Power BI team, they will have twins, <laughs> apparently. Yeah, Amanda, Amanda is just like <laughs> I'm not gonna have kids. I'm not gonna have kids yet. <laughs> <laughs> great, I see. Okay, great. Um, so uh, one of the things that I would uh, like to start with first is that what is your favorite uh, feature in one of these recent updates of Power BI? It's like lots of features, but let's yeah, say the one if you want to select. I think. Um... I think there are two things that, that are, are going to have a really big impact um, just in, in, in the product in general and, and just changing the way that Power BI works. Yeah. The, the one that's, that's shipped and that people can go and play with is aggregations. So this is the, the ability to say, um, I'm going to create a, create a model that's direct query over a source with, with trillions of rows of data. This is the demo that Christian always does. Yeah. Um, he, he, has, he has a data set that's a quarter of a petabyte. It's absolutely enormous. And we can build a Power BI model on top of that. Um, and rather than trying to take all of that data and load it into memory, like we do in Power BI, so that we can slice and dice on it, we just load the aggregated data. Um, and that lets you do uh, high level charts and, and slicing and dicing on that data. But then as you go down to lower levels of detail, and eventually when you get out of that aggregate, we turn back into direct query mode and go, and fly, excuse me, fire. Um, Five queries back to the underlying source. Hopefully, you'll have filtered your data down, so you're just looking at a subset at that point. So the query is actually performed, um, but it's all seamless to the end user. And I think that's 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 a really really uh, great great feature. Uh, the other one that kind of goes hand in hand with it a little bit is data flows. And this is a new, it's practically a new product. Really, it's not just a feature of Power BI. It's, it's, yeah. it's an entirely new area for us. Um, and I think it's got the potential to just become a, a, an entirely new. Um, an entirely new kind of way of doing BI. Um, the fact that, it, it, in my head, my simplest way of explaining it is ETL for the end user. Yeah. So if you want to go and build a data warehouse today, you've got to go and learn SQL scripting and integration services and whatever, and basically you need to be a BI developer or a DBA. Betaflows is simplifying all of that to the extent, to the extent that you know, we've got all of the connectors that we have in Power BI today, that you can go and use, you can go and do the transformations through Power Query interfaces just like it is within desktop, and then load that into a Power BI, Power BI data set in a really reusable and shareable and repeatable way um, that's built to scale way higher um, than, than something you would just do in desktop uh, locally. 
uh, and like I said, be reusable and, and, and sort of like picking out any of those individual bits of transformation and applying them to, to, to different flows. So it's a really interesting, mm, yes, I, yeah, I hate the phrase, it's, it's, it's a very cheesy phrase, but game changing. Uh, yes, correct. Uh, yeah, that, that, is, that is my favorite feature as well. Okay, awesome. Uh, talking about these features, um, I remember we had uh, like a session with you, you explaining how the power ideas that people go and put in Power BI, uh, in ideas.powerbi.com, uh, what is the process to turn them to an actual feature and release uh -huh. that? Can you explain that a little bit? Not, let's say, really long old details but yeah no, just okay. just to give people an idea of what yeah. is the process it, it, it's a it's, it's it's quite varied depending on the feature because some things um there's a lot of features that we've we've been talking about for ages and we've, we've always sort of thought yeah yeah we'll get to that one day and it's just not prioritized um sometimes people suggest stuff that bubble up through the list and we're like wow not never never really thought that. Um, but however these ideas come from, um, and the ideas forum is not the only place, right? We, we, we get a lot of feedback from uh, engagements with enterprise customers, from, from MVPs, from, uh, you know, from, from the community forums, all sorts. Uh, and, and that's one of the key jobs of the program manager, right, is, is to, to listen to all of this different feedback and figure out, okay, which of these things should we take forward and actually stick onto our backlog to get our developers to go work on? So, so once we've got got one of these ideas and somebody goes right we've got we've got somebody free to go work on this how what, what are we going to build um there's a whole set of activities that suddenly spin off um so the pms are the ones who are going to go and decide okay so functionally what does this thing need to do so take drill through for example um you know i i, I wrote up a spec where we were saying um somebody's going to define one of these drill through um uh, pages we're going to define the target page first um, and we're going to say it, uh, it, you, you choose the field that you want to be able to drill through on um, and then any other visual that's got that, I can right click it and do the drill through thing. Um, it's really, really simple, kind of high level. Yeah. And then we go and run it through some users and we go and send, send our research teams out to go and um, uh, gather feedback on does it make sense for people, does it sort of conceptually, do they understand it? If I just say drill through what they expect is, you know, because the drill through is a really good example because the term means a lot of different things to different people. You know, you drill up, drill down, drill through, drill across, drill down, you know, there's, there's, there's um, uh, a bunch of different terminology that people use for it. Um, but then also get a feedback on, on kind of the, the, the functional requirements of it. And then I'll go back and change the spec based on that feedback and we'll adjust things. Um, and in parallel to that, um, we'll have the engineers off thinking about like, architecturally what do we need to do? What are we going to add to the definition of a report to support this? Um, and how's it going to work between the desktop and the service and in mobile and all the other places where we need to support it? And we've also got the UX team going and saying, okay, what's it going to look like? What, what UI controls do we need? How is it going to work? Um, you know, what's it going to feel like when you're, when you're working with it? And then we usually go through another round of user testing once we've solidified a few of those ideas. Usually once we've got some, some high fidelity mock-ups of, of exactly what the experience would look like, or maybe a prototype. Um, we'll stick that in front of some users and we'll gather some more feedback. And we, we, we do that through a variety of mechanisms as well. We, we, we gather like one-on-one -on -one interviews. We do, uh, sometimes we do webinars with some of our champions and with the MVPs and the like. Um, and then there's this kind of iterative process to say, okay, we're, we're getting closer to exactly what the final experience is like. The developers are working down and fixing all the bugs that we're finding as we go. Um, and at some point we, we get to a point where um, usually like two months before the release. So let's say this is going to go out in the October release. Yep. In the in August, we'd be like, right, we're done. And we have to get to that point a couple of months before a product before a feature gets released, because we then go through this period of testing and stabilization and and, and bug bashes and, and trying it out in, and making sure it works with every other combination of feature, all of this sort of thing, and then. Um, uh, like I said, we have this kind of month of just testing and stabilization before it finally gets released. Um, and there's, there's a set of deployment processes that we go through to actually get it out into the wild as well. But, but broadly, that's kind of how, 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 uh, how it works. And that period, that can take anything between, like I said, you know, there's this, usually there's this sort of month and a half window where we just stabilize it. Even if it only took a couple of weeks to write the code, we've got to go through all that testing. So it, that could be anywhere between two months and six months or nine months, you know, a big feature like composite models we've been working on for months and months and months. Right. Um, whereas some of those smaller ones, sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll 
get most of it done in a couple of weeks. Right. And and yeah, I remember that you mentioned also something about like different personas of users that you think yeah. when you are thinking about that. Um, yeah, certainly in, in, the, in the first half of that process when we're doing the initial spec and like who's going to be using this feature, what do they do with it? Um, there are a few personas that we, uh, that we tend to refer to. Um, so the, the four that are most relevant for, for us are um, somebody called Nancy, who's our end user, our like executive and non-technical user. Um, she doesn't really care that she's using Power BI. She may not even know that it's Power BI. She, she usually just gets like a link in an email, clicks a link, the report opens, she finds the information she needs, and then she goes away again. Um, then there's Anna, who's our analyst, and they're the core Power BI user, I think certainly the core Power BI desktop user. Um, where they're the ones who are gathering all the data and mashing up and building models and that sort of stuff. We have Ben, who's a VR developer, who's um, a more, um, okay, a, 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 a uses some of the more advanced features. Maybe he's using uh, analysis services as well, not just desktop. Uh, we have, who else do we have? Um, we've actually got a new persona. Um, mm. Since we spoke in Dublin, actually, so there's a new one called Vic. And Vic sits somewhere between Anna and Nancy. So we found there's a lot of users who, like I said, click a link, get the information, and you go away again. And then you've got Anna who's working on desktop. But there's also a bunch of people who they go to a report and they click a few things and they change a few slices and they do a bit of interactivity and maybe they change some filters. But they often start to run into, well, the report doesn't do it, doesn't show me exactly what I want. I think I know what it is, but I can't make the report do it. And we find that they're, they're the users who are going to open up Q&A and start typing some questions. And maybe they, they want to add some more complex filters or they may, maybe they want to change some charts around to look at it in a slightly different way, slice by a different angle. And, and it's a new persona for us. And it's something we're going to be focusing on over the next six months, 12 months to, to bring some more capabilities that serve that, that kind of user. Exactly. So these personas are really useful for us to kind of, we, we just have a common way of talking about the different types of users that, that we're serving um as we're building these features that's that's interesting so so the process of getting ideas thinking about what kind of user it is building features around it and putting that inside power yeah that, that sounds quite interesting and usually you also give like two months of testing and playing with that feature which is yeah. quite interesting so features that yeah. let's say are uh, coming in October, it is actually released, um, not let's say fully released, but at least ready for test two months before that, sometimes in August. Yeah, That's... yeah. so usually we say like by the end of August, it needs to be finished. Okay. And then we use September to just test it out. And it's why when we do world tours or, or events or whatever, yeah. uh, we can usually show features that are going to ship the next month. We're quite confident about them because it's kind of done and we're just ironing out the last bugs. Correct. It's not always the case. Sometimes we show stuff that's really, really early and is going to come way further off. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, usually we're, we're pretty confident about what's happening next. That, that's, that's great stuff. Thank you. So, so the Power BI desktop, imagine like three years ago, when there was no Power BI desktop. Three years ago this time, actually, there was a Power BI desktop. Yeah, yeah. It, it was uh, July, and even a few months before that, it was like Power BI designer. But imagine before mm -hmm. that, like mm -hmm. three and a half years ago, four years ago, there was no Power BI desktop. Now, uh, move forward. Think about four years after this. What do you see <laughs> the future of No Power idea. <laughs> It's such it's such a difficult question because yeah, as you say, you know, the, the the market has changed so much. The product the product has changed so much because the market has changed. And, and uh, what I was just saying about these personas, the fact that we've added this new persona, yeah, or we've identified, you know, there are people who are doing something with Power BI or trying to do something with Power BI that we never really thought of before, um, and and we want to try and you know carve out a new niche for them. It, it makes it really difficult to predict where we'll be in in that sort of time time frame. And you know we do our planning cycles on a on a relatively short cadence, kind of six months, um, because we don't know where we'll be in in, uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. But I mean, broadly, you know, um, the, the the biggest thing that we're trying to do with Power BI at the moment is is um, make sure that everything we're doing is enterprise ready and enterprise grade. We, we we've had a, a legacy in the in the Microsoft BI world of enterprise BI products with reporting services and analysis services. And we just want to make sure that everything we're bringing from those products is supported in Power BI and works at the scale and reliability that that, that you would expect from that enterprise product. Um, 
I think we've we've done a great jo job on the self service side of, of building things that work for an enterprise. But when it comes to these larger models or you know uh, higher rates of refresh, and then when it comes to bringing in like the paginated reports and <clears throat> reporting services, we need to go and work on that sort of stuff. So that's that's the shorter term thing. That's the thing we're doing for the next year or so. Beyond that, you know, I, I see AI as kind of the other big thing that we need to go, yes. and, go and, um, invest in more. And I'm sure. And there are already um, some part of it implemented inside yeah, exactly. for the IES, yeah. Right, and actually, in fact, we, we've um, we, we've we really got a new we've almost got a new team. Um, so uh, if you know Justina yes. and uh, Richard Gatchuk, he's he's running that team, um, who are, who are really focusing on AI now, bringing much more uh, the integration to things like Azure ML and uh, bringing in some more. Um, uh, more visuals to help you do that analysis as well. So the, the interesting thing I think with AI is it's not just about building a model and having it go do a thing, but how does it help me do my analysis as I'm working with the product? Um, Correct. The aug augmented data analysis is it's a bit of a cheesy phrase, but I quite like it. I think it, it describes what's going on. We're, we're, we're not taking the human out of the equation entirely, but we're just helping them focus the thing, focus where they're doing their analysis. To have a better chance of finding something useful. That that's great. So so now we have uh, a part of Power BI team focusing on let's say ML and AI features, adding in Power BI because it was not there previously. Well, that that that's a great thing. Uh, another great things that I found from your explanation and the pace of Power BI updates every month is that the great feature about this is that the great thing about this is that it's different from let's say traditional like tool development when they develop a tool and after three years they review it but power bi desktop updates every month and you are you are reviewing like different personas different things like every six months every uh much less period so we can say that power bi keeps the momentum of the trend in the market people let's say want these functionalities it will have those functionalities which is Right. why we have these monthly updates yeah we can react much faster it, it is really good i mean i so i joined the engineering team uh nearly six years ago so this was back when we were power view power pivot power query the separate things in excel um, and reporting services was, was still our main kind of ship vehicle and we were just just starting to move from that 18 month or three year release cycle to doing something a bit more regularly and I mean, I was still kind of learning how product engineering worked at the time, so I, I don't really know what it was like before that. But it was interesting shit seeing the seeing the company and seeing the organization shift to to this kind of continuous delivery and being able to do it on a monthly, even weekly basis. You know, we 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 ship updates in the service every week. Yeah, great, awesome. Uh, that was quite great explanation. Do you have any last word for audience? You know, I think. Uh, all I want to say is, is, is thank you for, for everybody who takes part in the Power BI community and posts on the forums and submits ideas and gets on Twitter and writes blogs because I'm continually amazed by what, what people are doing with Power BI and how people are using it. And, and I really appreciate all the feedback that we get, like I said, from all of those different channels. Um, it, it, it's really interesting to hear what are on people's minds. It, it's the thing that I love most about Ignite actually coming here. It, it's such a shame you can't be here, Reza, because um, I love standing at the booth and just having a billion people walking past saying, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm doing this with Power BI. Oh, I've been doing that. I've been, you know. We had a message that I had some, some guy came up the other day, um, uh, and he said, um, let me just show you this report that I made. Uh, and he you know, clicks around on his phone. He's showing me on his phone. It shows me a couple of things on his dashboard, and he says, I got a bonus for this. My CEO gave me a bonus. <laughs> oh, that, that's great. This. Well, this is brilliant. I'm, I'm, I'm helping these people be successful in their careers. It's really cool. It is, it is brilliant. It is definitely brilliant. So everyone who is watching this, make sure to go to ideas.powerbi.com, to Power BI community, be in touch. Power BI team are watching that space. So make sure that uh, your voice will be heard and uh, you will see that sometime in the future um, if it has enough attention as a Power BI feature. Awesome. Well, thank you, Will, for your time. It was great to catch up with you and uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your ignite yeah thanks so much cheers brother thank cheers, you everybody. cheers